Welcome to the Rabbit Hole, Politics and Prose, a production of LibertyNation.com, hosted by Mark Angelides. Society has become a convenient service. Uh, its sole purpose now appears to be an automaton that delivers to you every woman desire. Whether it's uh, on-demand streaming services, same-day delivery, or moving away from the innocuous, it, it's something that brings you peace, safety, and the ability to never feel threatened or face challenges ever again. Is this the end result of thousands of years of culture? Is this what we've shaped the global human effort and experience to achieve? cut price TV delivered to a handset that you can hold while you wait for your pre-packaged meal to be processed and delivered. Safe in the knowledge that any soul who dares think anything differently to you will be punished by the state. Where did we go wrong? Perhaps more importantly, we should be asking whether this was a linear path for human history, or is it an aberration that we should be using our unique intelligence to solve just like any other problem. There's nothing new under the sun, and all this has happened before. Our, our history is replete with salient examples of the same or similar situations to those which we are now faced. So it bodes well that for perhaps the first time in modern society, we have such a huge swath of people finding out that the study of history is actually worthwhile. While once it was the, the preserve of monks, scholars, and noblemen, uh, history is now available to all who care to explore it, whether it's through books or libraries or as part of an online republication, wikis, websites dedicated to examining the past, or even podcasts. The keen student can now access resources in such abundance that his or her knowledge of the broad scope of humanity rivals that of the Medici princelings. And yet, with this unique access to the stories of our past, comes a set of very modern problems. First, uh, as mentioned earlier, everything is on demand. There's little need to scratch below the surface or to dig deeper as information is presented, uh, perhaps in a YouTube video or when there claim to be a complete record of such and such. It's really not. We're instead presented with a cut-rate, digestible snippet of a wider picture. And sadly, it's, uh, it's all too often one that is seen through the prism of modern mores and values. Can we still talk of uh, American exceptionalism or the British Empire without first divulging a litany of the great evils that were committed? It seems that those who chose to focus on one aspect of history are doomed to be pilloried and cancelled, because they did not focus on the heavily left-leaning ideology epitomized by the great usurper, critical race theory. Take, for example, the famed British author, Richard Cohen, who recently wrote a book titled The History Makers. Uh, now, this tome is about famous historians from the last two and a half thousand years. It was due to be published in America by Random House when the company decided that it didn't contain enough black representation. Prior to the cancelling, uh, Cohen had written an additional 18,000 words, specifically devoted to famous black figures. But this wasn't enough. Uh, critics accused it of being too Eurocentric. So if access to history about historians is now only viewable through this multicultural prism, where are the youth of today actually to learn about the past? One could argue that if critics would like to see more non-white representation in history books, they should perhaps stop the criticizing and go and write one. But that would, of course, require effort and to some extent talent. Again, this is on-demand world. You can get anything you want as long as it's shallow, vague, and follows an arbitrary set of moralities that only a minority of folks ascribe to. So, back to our original question. Is this grim, meager offering of empty factoids a problem we can solve? The answer seems to be yes, but the window of opportunity is closing. For now, people still use books, and the, the old masters of history are still available in libraries and bookshops. But for how long? Can we foresee a day when the great writers of history, the contemporaneous or the near-contemporary sources, finally fall afoul of the censorious? Almost certainly. 
consider Herodotus, thought to be the, the first historian who actually examined and investigated history. Often called the father of history, although just as often called the father of lies, he uh, introduced the world to what many call colorful history or the color period, as in it was told as a story with characters, possible motivations, backgrounds, uh, and it really described the events as if it were uh, a, a, an image you can picture in your mind, um, rather than just the straight proclamations of, of dates, names, winners, and losers. Uh, poor Herodotus is uh, under fire for having what is now described as an Aryan view of history. What of Winston Churchill? Uh, certainly his legacy is one of the prime forces that stood against that of Hitler in the Second World War. That's always going to be secure. Yet his work as a historian, although lesser known, has already begun disappearing from the record. His histories of both world wars were unusual in that he was actually a participant in both of them. In fact, in 1953, he won the Nobel Prize for Literature for his, quote, mastery of historical and biographical description, end quote. Yet today, who even knows that he was a historian? It seems that actual history, not the bite-sized sanitized chunks of fodder that are pushed out in a Henry Ford-style production line, uh, it's deemed too destructive and aggravating to the elitist narrative that all these forces of uh, globalism have met together to destroy it. You see, history fascinates us and it captivates the young most of all. When children learn of Egyptian dynasties and mummies and dinosaurs and the knights of old and chivalry and the heroics of battle and bravery, they form a connection with the past uh, and it's an interest that could could last them a lifetime but then little by little the sanitized history written by those who would rather see the the world's story as an evil construct created by bad white males it becomes the prominent media and the children look away well of course they do it's it's dull and it's demeaning so the window is closing. The historians of old need to be at the forefront of our historical research. We need to hear the voices, the speeches, and yes, even the exaggerations of Herodotus that will reinvigorate the study of this most important art. We dismiss history at our peril, and yet many seem content to have their Netflix version of histories or their bite-sized listicles delivered to their smart devices as they await fast food meal, delivered to their couch. Thank you for listening to The Rabbit Hole. I'm Mark Angelides. This is a production of LibertyNation.com. Who are we? We are Americans that believe in liberty. We are a project of the nonprofit One Generation Away. We are patriots who apply the founding principles to the issues of today. And they keep moving the goalposts on us. We are educators and commentators who love America and the Constitution. Who are we? We are Liberty Nation. The Rabbit Hole, politics and prose, a LibertyNation.com production. Available at Libsyn, Apple iTunes, Stitcher, on Roku, and other fine podcast providers.